He gently rebuked the people in the synagogue. Why? Because they were required to take care of the widows and the orphans. Right? Just as we are today. And that was a requirement of the synagogue during that day. And so they were not, obviously, taking care of this widow if she gave in her last two copper coins. Right? So it was a rebuke for them. So I want to talk about that in a minute, but let's talk about this woman, this woman of influence that we're still reading about today. She gave all she had. Can you imagine her last two coins? I want you to put yourself in that place if you were her. Your last two coins. I don't know how many of you have been in that place where you've been, maybe not the last two coins, but you know, your last paycheck, your last social security check or whatever. Um, almost on the streets. Maybe some of you have actually been on the streets and God's brought you through that. But we've all been in a place where we can relate to this lady. I believe that. Where we didn't maybe have everything we needed or we weren't sure where the next job was coming from. We've all been there. And we prayed and cried out to God. And I can remember times in my life where to me it was like giving the last $20 I had. But you know, there's a lot of stories in the Bible where um, it deals with finances, right? But this isn't just talking about money. I mean, that's important. But I want to go deeper than that because she gave all that she had to live on. This was life. She was giving everything of herself to the Lord. There's another uh, story in the Old Testament that I think about, and that's the widow with Elijah. Do you remember the story? It's in 1 Kings 17, if you want to go read it later. I'm just going to summarize it. Um, Elijah was told by the Lord, he had a prophetic word, that he was to go to a certain town and that he was going to meet someone who would provide for him and give him food and a place to stay. So he was looking for this provision that God had. And he, he sees this woman who's picking up sticks. So he asks her for a drink of water. And of course she gives it to him. And then he says, and make me a little cake of bread. And she says, I, you know, I can't help you, basically. She said, I've got enough oil and enough flour to make one more little cake of bread. I'm gonna feed my son and I'm gonna eat it and then we're gonna die. Hopelessness. She was on her last little bit. And the prophet asked her for that last little bit. That seems so harsh, doesn't it? It seems so, um, so mean, so vicious to ask this widowed woman to give the very last that she had. There's other stories in the Bible as well. What about the rich man who wanted to know how to get to eternal life? And what did Jesus say to him? Give everything. That's right. Sell everything you've got and give it to the poor. So why is this an important lesson for us today? The important lesson is to recognize the provision of God. That everything we have belongs to him, right? Amen. We gave up the rights to ourselves when we became believers. Amen. And it's not our life anymore, it's his. Everything we have, everything we own, belongs to him. Amen. And we are just stewards of it to take care of it. So that widow woman who went to make the cake of bread for the prophet, what happened? God supplied. And she had enough to make one for her, for her son. And it continued. Story after story in the Bible, God's provision. So why do we doubt him? Why do we have the struggle? We all have it, the struggle. I was uh, out running a couple years ago now. <laughs> uh, and I've told this story before, so some of you who are regulars may have heard it. But when I'm running, I love to, to pray to God. That's when I really reveal my innermost secrets to the Lord when I'm out running. And I was complaining to God. I run a nonprofit. We're dependent on donations. And I was crying out to God, why don't you just open the windows of heaven and pour 
about the money. I said, you would find one rich person, write me one check, and I'd be funny every year. Right? He can do that. He can. So why don't you? And I was just that plain with God. I said, just why don't you? And I heard him so clearly. He said to me, because that's what keeps you on your Facebook line. Oh my God. And I stopped running right then, and I said, my God. You know, if that's what it takes, if I have to struggle in that faith of believing, and that's what keeps me on my face before him, then praise God, I'm staying there. Now, the, the good news is I got victory over that, and I completely trust him now Amen. with all the finances that come in. I know he's going to provide. I know this is a work of the Lord, and he's got it. So now it's the other things that keeps me on my face. <laughs> but we have to stay in that place, right? Whatever it takes. But why everything? Why doesn't God just, I mean, you know, it says give 10%. Yeah, well, that's a whole lot easier than everything, right? God said everything. He wants everything. He wants all of you, all that you have, all that you will be, all of your hopes, all of your dreams, all of your family. He wants it all. Why? Because he's got something better. When you lay all that at his feet, the riches that come to you, the blessings, the power, the boldness, the intensity, the people, all the things that God is wanting to give to each one of us, but there's a requirement. Everything. Everything. So the question I have for you today is what are you holding back? What has God put his finger on today? Because I believe this message is for each one that's here. This is a personal word for you. So God is saying, what are you holding back? What are you holding on to? What are you grabbing hold of that you need to let go of? I'm going to tell you a story. I love to tell this story. I've told it around the world, and I love it. And then we'll, I'll let Pastor Shannon take over. Uh, there's a story of a man who was, uh, who was a poor beggar. And he was at his last bowl of rice. So he decided that he would take his bowl of rice and go out on, along the street because he heard there was a new king in the land. And he wanted to see this new king. Would he be a, a good king or a bad tyrant? And he wanted to see it before he died. So he thought, well, I'll just take my bowl of rice and I will go out there and sit by the road and wait for the king to come by. Then I'll eat my rice and die. He had a plan. <laughs> so he sat there and before too long, he started to hear the fanfare, the big parade, and he saw all of the, the horses and you know, the soldiers coming out before the king. And he got so excited. All this beautiful fanfare and the colors and the flags and it was beautiful and then he started to feel self-conscious and he was ashamed because he was in filthy rags so he, he looked down and said I can't look at my king in the face I'm just not worthy and so he felt as the parade was coming by he felt them stop and he could feel the shadow over him as his eyes were down and he knew the king was before him and the king said, beggar, give me some of your rice. Hmm. And he thought, what an angry, terrible king that he has so much and so many riches, but yet he asks for some of my rice. This is all I have. And he wants some of my rice. He was so angry at him. So disappointed. And he said, well, he's the king, so I'll take out five grains of rice. And he put them in the servant's hand to take to the king. Then he closed his eyes and did not look up. He was so discouraged. And he saw the parade go by and the king left. And he looked at his bowl of rice that he laid on the ground. And there were five golden coins in the bowl of rice. One coin for each grain of rice. And he said out loud, if I had only known my king, 
I would have given him my all. That's the kind of story that we need to have. Success story of giving our all to Jesus and allowing him to take that and make it into something beautiful. So I want us to, um, to pray at the end and let Pastor Shana come first, but I want you to take this to heart because I believe, as I said, this is a word from the Lord for you. And I heard specifically as we were praying on the way down here, and I told Pastor Shana, I said, I believe that some here are holding on to a family member. You've been standing in prayer, you've been believing God for it, but God is saying, you've got to lay it at the altar. It's one thing to pray for them, it's another thing to hold tightly and try and make it happen. And the Lord is saying, now you've got to let it go. So we're going to pray for that, whoever that is here. Maybe it's more than one. And there's a family member, a husband, a child, grandchild, sister, uncle, some, someone in your family that you've been, you've been holding on to, trying to help, trying to change, trying to make a difference. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes, but let me just pray and then Pastor Shane will come up. Lord God, I pray that this message does what it was empowered to do, that it goes forth and breaks every woman free. We thank you, Lord God, that you don't bring condemnation on us, but you bring release and freedom. So I pray, Lord, that each woman would receive it with that in mind, that this is you, Lord God, crying out for all so that we can have even the better. So we thank you, Lord God, that you are our supply, that you do everything for us and you give us everything we need. And we thank you, Lord God, that you never leave us and never forsake us. Help us, Lord, to hold on to that. And I pray that you'd stir the hearts of each one here of what they're holding on to and what they need to let go of. Help us, Lord, to let go of everything. In Jesus' name.